Zelda no Densetsu, the Hyrule Fantasy, was released in 1986 for the Famicom Disk System. Europe and the Americas saw it released one year later in 1987 in the form of a cartridge with a battery backup save instead of a disc. So let's pop in the disc that started it all for the Zelda franchise and see what it looks like today. All we do is make sure we got side A facing up. There we go. Listen to that baby hum. Now anybody watching this video probably already knows that The Legend of Zelda is the ultimate classic game. The franchise went on to make more than a dozen sequels to this game. And it's a great example of an early blockbuster game. I mean, this game simply had everything you wanted in a video game. And it did it very, very well. But the real question is, to the serious collector, is it worth investing in a Famicom Disk System and tracking down a copy of The Legend of Zelda on Famicom Discs? So what I'm going to do in this review is not actually attempt to review The Legend of Zelda. It's been done many times before, and it's a great game, bar none. But what I'm going to do is concentrate on the differences between the Famicom Disc version and the cartridge-based version. And right off the bat, you'll notice that aside from the Japanese language being predominant in this game instead of English, which would be obvious, but not always. Some Japanese uh, Famicom games are all in English. Uh, the same as your American or European counterparts. Um, you'll notice that the music sounds richer and fuller, and that's because the Famicom Disk System had an extra sound channel, and this game actually utilized it. That and the Magic Book, or Book of Magic, in this game is called the Bible, which was a uh, something Nintendo had a policy against changing for games in America when they released them to America. They took out all religious connotations for some reason. I guess that was just Nintendo's way of playing it safe. Incidentally, one of the downsides of the Famicom disk system is the loading time. And it can be uh, quite significant sometimes. Unlike the cartridges, uh, which had near instantaneous loading. One thing that you'll notice in the Famicom Disk System version of the game is that it is actually uh, quite unchanged from the cartridge-based game. Um, as far as overall map, uh, enemies, everything like that, it's the same exact game. It's identical. Though the uh, in-game text when the characters speak is all in Japanese. That's the um, only difference I could see on the overall physics of the game and the actual game itself. Uh, now, there is significant changes in the sound of the game. And, uh, like I said, the Famicom Disk System had an extra sound channel, um, which allowed for a lot more um, musical diversity in the game itself. And this game takes full advantage of it. A lot of the sound effects have changed, but the overall gameplay is identical. And also, if you're looking for any kind of graphical difference, uh, it's simply not there. You're not going to find it. It's the identical uh, same graphics as the cartridge-based version. Ah, more disk loading. Now, I think the music for the uh, dungeon levels is identical to the uh, cartridge-based version, uh, which surprised me. I thought uh, it would have been a little bit um, different, just because of the uh, sound channel options, but it's not. But what you will hear are the sound effects in the dungeon um, are radically different. Uh, like the little tune you hear when you move a block that can be moved and a door opens and things like that. Or when you approach the um, monster of the dungeon, uh, 
the sounds are drastically different, and it's pretty cool, actually. I'll just step back a minute and let you, uh, take in the ambience of the dungeon without my voice interfering. Now there was one key feature that the uh, Legend of Zelda on the Famicom Disk System uh, had that the part versions didn't, and that was the fact that one of the enemies uh, in this game, uh, the enemy Pole's voice, you actually killed on this version by shouting into the microphone on controller number two on the Famicom. And uh, since no other systems other than the Japanese Famicom had the actual microphone, um, Nintendo changed that dynamic of the gameplay. But they didn't change it on the actual um, manual for the North American and European versions of the game. It still says for Pole's voice that it dislikes loud noises. And that has nothing to do with its weakness in the cart versions of the game. Look at that. Kill the dungeon boss with one bomb. Awesomeness. And the disc loading jars us back to reality. And back to the overworld. Where anything can happen, I guess. I don't know. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over one screen and kill myself so you can see uh, or actually hear the differences uh, because they're mostly auditory between the disc system version and the cart version for when you die. And there you have it, Zelda no Densetsu for the Famicom Disk System. Definitely a good thing to have to hunt down uh, and to add to your collection if you're a big Zelda fan or a Nintendo fan. I myself am personally both, so I went out of my way to pick up a copy of Zelda. I'm Dami from Classic Games Revisited. Until next time.